That's way too complicated, Eric, that story. Wow. Love triangles. Okay, well, how about starting a business? If you lost your job and you're thinking you want to start one, we wanted to help you out in today's Take Charge Consumer Protection segment. It's a tough economy right now, and we don't want you to make any mistakes. So let's talk about how to start your business and keep it afloat. Special guest today, joining me now, New York Times columnist and a small business owner himself, Gene Marks. Hi, Gene. Hey, Jamie, how are you? Good. I know you say pick something you love. Don't just do it because you think it'll work. Pick something you love. But there are pitfalls. So if you're going to take yeah, charge and start a business, what's, what's the number one tip of a do, something you should do? Well, first of all, it, when you're starting a business, what you really want to try and do is you want to take advantage of some of the free resources that are out there. I mean, a lot of business people, when they're just getting started, don't realize how much help they can get for nothing. I mean, for example, at universities all across the country, there are small business development centers. You can Google them to find out one that's near you. They offer all sorts of free help with organization, a little bit of help on taxes, helping you with marketing or research. Really, really good. Another really good organization is SCORE. It's S-C-O-R-E. They're partially funded by the government, and they have all sorts of retired executives that help out small business owners, particularly guys that are starting up their own business. And one other place, um, Startup Nation is a really, really good website to go to with a whole bunch of free resources that kind of help you kind of get up and go. Who are the folks behind StartupNation.com? Right. Well, the, the folks behind StartupNation.com, it's run by a guy named Rich Sloan, who is fantastic. And he's put together this website of all sorts of entrepreneurs and experts. Uh, they run forums, they run communities, they run um, all sorts of question and answer you know, places where small business owners can get all their questions answered. They also have all sorts of white papers and resources to kind of you know, help you understand the, the ins and outs of getting a business going. All right. So now once you're in, you obviously need <laughs> capital, you need cash. Uh, what are some of the, the, the don'ts in terms of getting your business funded and getting it advertised and on the road? Well, the, the big thing you got to keep in mind is, is conserving cash. Don't spend cash if you don't need to spend cash. Try and take advantage of everything that you can for the least cost as possible. It sounds obvious, but people sometimes they get a little capital in their pockets and they spend it unnecessarily. A good startup person is a real penny pincher, a real miser. Um, there's plenty of technologies that are out there, Jamie, that really help a startup kind of get up and running for really, really cheap. I mean, a lot of people work out of their homes to start with. I mean, you can, you can run your accounting system on services like FreshBooks, for example, or QuickBooks Online. They're like nine or ten bucks a month. Um, you can have an entire phone system for yourself, and if you have one or two other people helping you, uh, there, there, there are hosted phone systems, one made by grasshopper.com and another by virtualpbx.com. By the way, I'm not getting paid to endorse these people. I just know them because they're out there. And when you have a virtual phone system, you pay about 10 bucks a month, and they host your entire phone system for you. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on capital to get yourself up and running. You take advantage of some of the technology that's out there and really try and keep as much cash as you can in the bank. I know you're just trying to promote the things that can help, and I did ask you for specifics because right. if people really want to do this now, you've given them a great place to start. One thing you say is to make sure your family's okay with you going out and being an entrepreneur. What if they say yeah. no, but you're out of a job and you really want to give it a try? I mean, Jamie, it, it, it's a family decision. I mean, I know myself, when I started up my business, I left nine years of working for a big company in Philadelphia. Um, it was a joint decision with my wife. It has to be a joint decision with your spouse because you're going to work harder than you've ever worked before. I mean, hopefully you're picking something that you love, but running a startup business, really running any small business if you're a business owner, it's a 24-hour job. Your spouse has got to be behind you. Frankly, your kids have to be behind you, too, because they're all going to be relying on you. The last thing you're going to need is getting abuse or, or, or getting criticism when you're trying to make all that kind of a balance. Right. I can um, hear the nagging now, Gene. That's the last thing you need <laughs> if you're starting a business. I have to leave it there, but I thank you so much. What great advice you gave us today, and I know your business is doing well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jamie. If you want more of our Take Charge Consumer Protection segments, just go to foxnews.com.